You are listening to the Free to Be Mindful podcast, which invites you along on a journey to learn of mindful living, grow in mental health, and inspire through personal growth. In a world where we can often feel much stress and overwhelm, this podcast provides bite-sized tips and real talk conversations, empowering you to embrace mindfulness and nurture your full potential. I'm your host, Vanessa de Jesus Guzman, educator, licensed professional counselor, entrepreneur, and mom. I'm passionate about helping others live life with peace of mind and ease of heart without losing their, well, you know, here we go. Hello and welcome to episode 172 of the Free to Be Mindful podcast. I hope that you're feeling good, looking good, and doing better in this world than you were yesterday. So of course, whenever we pick up our devices, what is the first thing, the first app, the first place that you usually go to when you pick up your phone? For me, at least, it's social media because it's everywhere. It's almost as though you cannot get through your day without checking social media. And if you can, please reach out to me because I'd love to know how you do it. Because whether you're scrolling through a TikTok video while you're eating or posting a fun picture of your vacation on Instagram or seeing that wedding post from an old friend on Facebook, social media has truly become one of the widest platforms for interaction, for sharing content, and for just expressing the little pieces about ourselves and our lives. And here's a little confession that I'll share with you you, the hundreds of listeners who tune in each month. (laughs) But here's a little confession. I always hear about people, typically on social media, who have these amazing routines, right? Amazing morning routines. They say that they wake up slowly, then they have a gratitude practice, they move their body in some way, they read a book, they do some journaling, they get work done. It all sounds amazing to do all of that before the kids wake up, if you have kids. And while mindfulness is obviously my jam, just as important is giving you real talk, meaning that I always keep it real with people because something I value is authenticity and I expect that back. So I give it to you. So my friends, I'll share with you, here's my secret, that when my alarm rings in the morning, My alarm is also my phone. The very first thing I do is, don't judge me, check social media. (laughs) I check social media. I check my email. I check all of the things that have a notification because the truth is that I don't like it when my phone looks like a Christmas tree. I hate like seeing unread notifications. So I open each and every app, each and everything that has a notification and I check it out. Now, this doesn't always work in my favor as when I'm checking things with one eyeball open half asleep, I'll forget what I looked at and then I'll forget to respond to people that are expecting a response back from me. It also isn't a good idea because when I do get caught up in scrolling, it usually takes away from time that I could be perhaps not journaling so early in the morning. Awesome if you do it. I'm not knocking it. It's just not something that I engage in in the morning anyway. But perhaps I could be getting out of bed a few minutes earlier, start to wash my hair with time or actually fix my bed or doing a couple of other things that I sometimes don't do when I'm rushing through to then get ready for the day. And it is totally fair to say that social media can be addicting and it can get toxic, especially when we don't use it in a positive space. It can be time consuming. It can lead to unhealthy practices like comparing your life to others' lives online. And maybe even, I shouldn't say maybe, and even, it can impact our self-esteem and even our confidence because it's so easy. I've done it myself. It's so easy to get caught up in the literal highlight reel and think, geez, everyone does such fun things while I don't. Or think, everyone looks fantastic and I'm sitting here in my sweats or think people are so funny and I guess I really don't have a good sense of humor after all. So of course, we have to remember that it is indeed a highlight reel. And sure, I myself even share pictures of when I went to Europe this summer, right? But I don't share the pictures when I'm just sitting on my couch in sweats, chilling with no makeup on because who wants to see that? 
with or without a filter. And even on my professional page, when you see a video sounding well-versed in something, or even as you're listening to this podcast or watching this video, what you don't see are all the bloopers. You don't see the edits that have been put out. Or on my phone, you don't see all of the blooper videos of when I just started again and again. I'm all about authenticity, but I also don't want to prolong the point and talk four or five minutes because nobody really has time for that. So I try to condense things as much as possible. And if I'm a middle-aged woman seeing and thinking this, and wow, I hate to say middle-aged women, but it is what it is. (laughs) You know that the middle school girl is most definitely not able to filter out reality versus filtered pictures, or she isn't able to get past a photo of when her friends are all hanging out together without her. So managing social media for kids is a whole different conversation that we are not going to cover today, but perhaps sometime in our future. But as far as you and me, whether you're two a middle-aged woman or not, With the right intention and mindset, social media can and should be used as a tool for connection, as a tool for inspiration and for personal development. And especially in challenging times, we can use social media to uplift each other and to spread some much needed love and positive energy. On my personal pages on social media, it helps me stay connected with my family across the country and especially with my family in Dominican Republic. On my professional pages, I have met, I can't tell you how many wonderful women via Instagram, specifically during the time of COVID, because more of us were seeking these virtual connections, right? And there were so many women who I either met in a Zoom room or in a virtual conference or just like, you know, in comments and alive. And I still remember that once COVID was mostly over and things were beginning to open back up. I remember the first time going to an in-person conference and there were so many of these wonderful women that I met all in the same room that we almost forgot that we really hadn't known each other or met each other in IRL or in real life, that we gave each other such tight, tight hugs. And it seemed like we knew each other for years, but it was actually the first time that we had met each other, but we had a whole online relationship that now has thankfully carried over in real life. So social media can be used for community building and for building not just community, but also for building fulfilling relationships. Meeting new friends or partners through apps geared for relationships, whether it be dating apps or apps for new friends, especially when, let's say, if you're moving to a new area or a new state, or maybe you just want to meet new people that have similar interests and passions or an online community can really be what you may need. And that is more of our reality nowadays that we may meet more people online and then meet them in person. There are so many online communities that have great positive interactions. And that's how I've built my community of Amiga Moms as well. It's so awesome to see and interact with people's usernames as we like, comment, and and DM each other once in a while. And then to meet somebody at an in-person Amiga Moms event and say, wait, are you little girl mom 1975? (laughs) It sounds hilarious. But it really is indeed really amazing. And while I'm still learning to navigate TikTok, again, middle-aged <laughs> women, there are so many cool people showcasing their hobbies, their interests, such as music, cooking, dancing, fashion, so many things. And it's a really great way to engage with others and a really great way to learn new things. Social media can be a positive space for people, but it's with the right mindset and positivity. It's important to remember to create a healthy and safe environment and keep the connections trusted and our commentary positive as well, because we're always setting that example for the younger generation. And of course, social media can be a great outlet for sharing information. Not fake news, but for sharing great information. 
There's a lot of trusted sources out there that can actually fill you in on so many important things. And this is one of the things that I myself strive to do as an educator turned licensed therapist, podcast host, and keynote speaker. I enjoy sharing information that can positively impact and educate other people. And obviously, we do get some news on social media. I mean, I feel as though every time there's a celebrity who unfortunately passes away, I see it on social media first before I see it on TV. With this, though, what we want to keep in mind, especially when receiving information, is that we don't go into information overload. Sometimes, especially with unfortunate global events when these things take place, The algorithm gives you more of the same thing that you've been interacting with. So the more that you watch this type of news, the more it will give you. And that can be really tough to keep calm and keep your mental health in check. So we must learn to either use a mute button on people or um, broadcasts or channels that are not good for our mental health when applicable, or to just give ourselves a specific few minutes to scroll and then to close the app and not open it back up mindlessly, more on mindlessly in a bit. And in addition to great news, Social media is a great outlet for just life events. Back in the day, we used to wait for those birth announcements or for the phone calls to come in to share about family and friends engagements and and big news. And now it's just simple posts. There's so many times where I've had the opportunity also to donate to special causes that are important to me that I would not have found out about if it wasn't for social media, whether it's a GoFundMe if someone has experienced a loss or a hardship, or if it's a national cause, social media can really bring information to our fingertips, quite literally. And I also very much appreciate how it allows us to share about our cultures and to share about special days that we perhaps may otherwise not know about should those people, culture, these events not be present in our own life. You know that my motto is learn, grow, and inspire. And I truly love having the opportunity to just learn something at the drop of a dime. Again, especially if it's something brand new to me that I wouldn't have otherwise learned about. And last, in terms of sharing information and obtaining information, I've come across so many small businesses and local events that I now support that, again, I would have never known about had it not been for social media. So in addition to learning about the news and life events, you can also learn about a ton of positive resources to help you with your mental and physical health and so many other things. I try to do that myself through my Counselor V. De Jesus page in regards to sharing about this Free to Be Mindful podcast or about mindfulness or social emotional learning book reviews or my happy dog or any resource to help kids and moms and educators. And then on my Amiga Moms pages, I share about the virtual Real Mom Talks, which are the virtual monthly support groups, and then our in-person events. There are just so many incredible, talented, and intelligent people providing free content out there that the biggest thing to really navigate is just knowing where to look. And when we're doing all of this learning, growing, and hopefully inspiring, we want to make sure that we use it with the mindset that lets us grow a little bit more each day. In other words, we want to be mindful with the time that we spend on our various apps and mindful with the way in which we engage with it and who we engage with as well. Being mindful of how much time we spend on social media is so important because it's so easy. I mean, it's designed to keep you on the app. So it's so easy to get stuck on there for way too long. So we want to make sure that we learn ways that we can set these limits for ourselves. And maybe that's setting an actual timer. It's so easy to do. You simply say, hey, Siri, set a timer for five minutes or for whatever amount of time that you'd like. And then after that, once the timer goes off, the most important thing is not to swipe up on the notification, but to then close the app, take the actual break, go for a walk, disconnect, reconnect, you know, with a person in in person in real life, 
um, or reconnect with yourself. Sometimes we are so you know quick to do something else that we forget about that connection with ourselves. If you are not aware, or if you'd like to be surprised and become aware of how much time you actually spend on social media, you can go into the settings in your phone and it tells you exactly how many hours per day you spend on all of your various apps. And trust me, it would blow your socks off to really see how much time you actually spend on there. In addition to that, we want to be mindful of who we interact with and how we interact with them. Exercising compassion and kindness is key when we interact with anybody. We want to think to ourselves, are we leaving behind positive comments or are there some comments that can be better left in our minds? Are the things that we're either sharing or taking in helpful, productive, or positive? And just as I hope we want to spread light and joy, it's important to take that in for ourselves as well. So if we're experiencing things like hurtful comments or online disagreements or criticism, that can be really hard. And that can play a big part, again, on our mental health, even if we're just consuming and taking it in, even if we're not the ones that are actually doing the typing. So always remind yourself of your self-worth. Don't allow mean comments to bring you down or define your identity. Only you know yourself best and only you can speak your whole truth. So if there's somebody spreading negativity on your page, you can always block them. You can always delete them. You can always get them off your page. It's very simple to do. And if it's somebody that you feel bad, just mute them so that you don't have to see their stuff. Also, reflect on a few things like, am I leaving genuine feedback or somebody leaving genuine feedback for me? Or was it just trolling? And if it's the first one, there can be strategies to implement to take in the feedback in a positive way or responding in a constructive way or, you know, getting into discussion, respectful discussion that you where you share and discuss differences or maybe you just ignore it altogether. But be sure that you're being mindful for your purpose on social media. And that can be as simple as wanting to post your dog in the cute sweater that you just got him. <laughs> or as big as posting about a loved one or posting about an event, whatever your purpose is, it can be used to bring smiles to people's faces when used correctly. It can be a great way to stay up to date on the big things and on the little things. And of course, know what is good for you and not good for you. Whenever I want a moment to de-stress, this is another tidbit about myself, because I engage with so many golden doodle posts, if you know me, you know that I have a medium-sized golden doodle who is a certified therapy dog, but I also love seeing other doodle posts. So because I engage with these types of posts so much, I know that at any given time, when I open Instagram, one of the first reels I'm, they're going to show me is some kind of funny or cute puppy post. And I've been deliberate. This is where, you know, the, the mindfulness comes in. I've been deliberate with engaging on these types of posts because I want the app to work for me, right? I want them to show me what I want to see instead of showing me like CNN stuff that's just going to stress me out. And not that the news isn't important, right? We should be well informed. It's just that I don't need it pushed in my eyeballs every moment of the day. When I want the news, that I catch on TV. So I can turn it off as soon as I want. And when I'm doing my scrolling, it's not there because I know that that's not good for me. So all in all, there's so much good to come across social media if you make it work for you. It's a place of so much more technology, art, and innovation, and we're truly living in a time where we can actually see the progress that people are making and enjoy beauty and creativity that people engage in. We can collaborate with a slew of people and other like-minded individuals on various projects in our communities if we choose. We can create safe spaces to talk about things, to actually listen to each other, to share perspectives that are unique to us or find people that understand us and relate to our own lived experiences. But in a time where human connection is so important, social media allows us to celebrate diversity. And it allows us to embrace inclusion if we so choose to obtain that information. And of course, sometimes social media is just good for fun, right? <laughs> the memes, 
the silly little videos that make us smile, the videos of life's precious moments when people go live for big events like weddings, or just getting updates from our friends and, and family and jobs and activities and whatever it is that we want to open our world to. I love having separate group DMs with my close girlfriends, with my brothers, with my husband, and we just send memes to each other. And it's a way that although we're not having a full on conversation in that moment, we're thinking of each other, we're sending it to this individual and letting them know that we're just thinking of them. So it is an additional way to form connection. We just want to be mindful that we're making the connections in real life as well. Like with anything in life, social media can be used at excess. Food can be used at excess. Anything can be. But that's why it is super important to recharge and take breaks, to refuel your energy, and to rediscover what makes you happy. And more importantly, above all, what brings you peace? Whether social media for you is a place for learning, enjoyment, connection, taking a break, or a combination of it all, it can be used for really positive things and it can be truly impactful. The main thing is that you have fun and enjoy what you're doing, what you're seeing, what you're creating, or what you're consuming. I now invite you to join me on this short guided meditation. So right now, regardless of where you are or what you're doing, think about a moment when you were actually present looking at your phone. We say to be more mindful on social media or to be more mindful when using an app, but we may not always know or realize or understand what that fully means. So without actually doing so, think about holding the phone in your hands. Think about perhaps taking a breath before you answer the phone when you hear a ding or a dong. When you choose to open an app, do you know exactly what you're going there for? Do you know where it is that you're going? Are you doing that intentionally? Or are your fingers or is your thumb just going there without purpose? Actually think to yourself before you open an app, I'm going to open this app for this purpose for this amount of time. And maybe you even repeat that silently in your mind as you open the app. So look at the time before you open the app. Think about your intention when you open it. Enjoy the time that you're on there. And then whether it is the use of a timer or just being conscious of the time that you've spent on there, once you've done what you've needed to do, close it and go on and being present with the next thing that you're doing. Again, mindfulness is paying attention to the moments that you're in, to the right here and right now with kindness and curiosity, kindness about how you show up, with curiosity about what you're going to come across, trying to let judgments go. That's an important one, especially when on social. And then if you become mindless, knowing that you can bring yourself back to awareness and that in and of itself is practicing mindfulness. Remember, my friends, as always, that in a world where you are free to be anything that you want to be, you are always free to be mindful. Thanks for tuning in and catch you next week.